Roller coasters are awesome and fun and completely horrifying. But just how safe are those wild rides that we'll happily spend hours standing in line for? There are a few things the industry probably doesn't want you to know. Here's why you may never want to get on a roller coaster ever again. It's worth noting that roller coaster related fatalities really aren't that common, but there have been reports of bizarre things happening inside the skulls of occasional riders. According to Science Direct, the most common neurological injuries suffered by roller coaster riders are subdural hematoma, which sounds vaguely unsettling, and cervical artery dissection, which are the kinds of things that make you never get on another roller coaster again ever. The main thing to keep in mind is that roller coasters can exacerbate pre-existing conditions. In 2001, a woman died on the Goliath roller coaster at California's Six Flags Magic Mountain. According to the LA Times, the coroner concluded that she had a brain aneurysm, which is a bulging blood vessel that she was likely unaware of when she got on the ride, and the stress of the ride itself helped the aneurysm rupture. So basically, don't ride roller coasters if you have a brain aneurysm which is something you may not know about unless you ride a roller coaster. Okay, so the whole brain aneurysm thing is kind of a wild card, but at least we know that federal regulations and safety rules will keep us from ever getting on a poorly maintained or inherently dangerous ride, right? Um, well, according to the Boston Globe, the entire amusement park industry is under-regulated. There's no federal oversight, and each state has its own set of thrill ride safety laws. Cross the state line and you're entering a whole different rodeo. Only portable amusement rides, the ones that are hastily assembled at your local fairgrounds once a year, are subject to federal regulation. So that means the states are picking up the slack, right? Well, according to the IAAPA, as of 2018, six states had no theme park ride regulation in place at all, at any level. A 2017 report by Safer Parks says 30 states lack, quote, comprehensive government oversight and roughly 10 states punt the responsibility to county governments or private inspectors. Weirdly, Florida is pretty good about doing those safety inspections, but they exempt any theme park that has a thousand or more employees. So Disney World, Universal Studios, and SeaWorld get to do their own safety inspections, even though other parks in their state are subject to inspections by state-trained inspectors. So just in case you were thinking that the big parks are the safest places to go with the kids, well, that depends on how much you trust Disney and on how you define safe. Safety at big fixed location theme parks really depends on state regulations, but maybe traveling carnivals are safer since they're subject to federal oversight, right? Come on, you didn't actually think that might be true, did you? Because we've all experienced that unsettling feeling of looking at a wacky roller coaster and thinking to ourselves, that thing looks like it's going to fly apart. Unlike fixed site roller coasters, the coasters and other rides at traveling carnivals are frequently disassembled and reassembled, which is scary if you spend too much time thinking about it. All it takes is a few loose bolts to send the whole thing careening across the midway. According to Thrillist, traveling carnivals are on the road 9 to 10 months of the year, and they might change locations weekly. But carnival operators will tell you that the assembly and disassembly process helps make the ride safer because it allows technicians to view every part of the ride and catch potential problems as they arise. On the other hand, carnival workers are overworked and underpaid, and there is no routine inspection by federal investigators. They usually only step in after an accident has already happened, which isn't very helpful, frankly. So it doesn't seem to matter if you're at a carnival or an amusement park. No one can really guarantee your safety when you board that ride. Is it supposed to stay upside down like this? I don't think so. Well, at least you can be sure that the guy strapping your kid into that crazy looking roller coaster has undergone rigorous training and is uniquely qualified to make sure everyone stays safe while on board, right? Well, get ready for some bad news. From here on, it gets really scary. The head of Cedar Point's Ride Operations Department told the AV Club that ride operators have to take a course before they're allowed to start working the individual rides. So that sounds awesome and super reassuring, except the course she later revealed only lasts about two and a half hours. So the people who take your kid's life into their hands when they strap him or her into a machine that travels 80 miles an hour only have to undergo about 1.25% as much training as, say, a barber working in New York State. But don't worry, they also have to spend some time training at the ride and 8 to 10 hours being shadowed by an experienced ride operator before they're declared A-OK -okay to run a giant dangerous piece of machinery full of vulnerable children and undiagnosed heart patients. 
And it's not like people working low-paid jobs doing super redundant things don't take their jobs seriously or anything. Happy riding! Part of what makes thrill rides so appealing is that they subject us to forces we don't usually encounter while we're just walking around doing boring, normal person things, or even when we're breaking traffic laws on a long, straight freeway or winding mountain road. As of 2016, the G-Force record for a roller coaster was 6.3 Gs. Just for comparison, astronauts only experience about 3 Gs during a rocket launch. Although granted, those G-Forces last a lot longer than they do on a typical roller coaster ride. A 2016 report compared acceleration-deceleration eye injury to shaken baby syndrome and noted that doctors should consider roller coasters as a potential culprit whenever these types of injuries don't have any other explainable causes. In 2016, NBC says there were 30,900 emergency room visits for injuries caused by amusement park attractions. In the industry's defense, though, it's not clear how many of those injuries happened on roller coasters versus, you know, choking on a corn dog while riding the merry-go-round or something. So it might be more useful to just look at roller coaster deaths and then extrapolate from there just how dangerous thrill rides actually are. Between 2010 and 2017, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says there were 22 thrill ride fatalities. Not all of them, though, were people getting killed on rides. Sometimes people get killed doing other things, like getting stuck while trying to retrieve a lost item. And the industry points out that 335 million people visit amusement parks every year, so the fatality rate is really very low. Those numbers, though, don't say how many people are actually riding. Still, the International Association for Amusement Parks says your chances of sustaining a theme park injury serious enough to give you an overnight hospital stay is about 1 in 16 million, which is way, way better than your 1 in 700,000 chance of being struck by lightning in any given year. Not surprisingly, third-party investigators often dig up different figures than the theme park industry itself. According to CNN, the International Association for Amusement Parks, or IAAP, conducts its own annual safety survey on fixed-site amusement rides. The IAAP reported almost 30,000 fewer accidents in 2016, so either carnival rides are like 24 times more dangerous than fixed-site amusement rides and other attractions, or the IAAP is seriously under-reporting the number of injuries that happen at theme parks. And let's not lose sight of the fact that not everyone seeks medical attention for an injury and that theme park authorities almost certainly aren't made aware of every single accident that someone has on park grounds. So both of those statistics are likely to understate the total number of accidents that happen on roller coasters and other park attractions. Those extreme modern roller coasters with their twists and drops and g-forces might seem scary, but no roller coaster gives you quite the same thrill as a 100-year-old wooden coaster, for one simple reason. High-tech roller coasters are high-tech, which provides at least the illusion of safety. A wooden roller coaster that was built 100 years ago is a wooden roller coaster that was built back in the days before seatbelt laws were a thing and when people used radioactive water to treat arthritis. Not all wooden roller coasters are old, though. According to the New York Times, some parks are installing brand new wooden roller coasters because wooden roller coasters have features you won't find in steel rail designs. They're slower so they can have tighter turns than steel roller coasters can. They're also temperamental and require more maintenance. A badly designed wooden roller coaster may be slow and dull on a cold day and fast and potentially dangerous on a hot day. Wooden coasters will sag over time, too, and humidity can loosen the bolts, making the ride feel shaky and rickety. It's all good, though. Even a 100-year-old roller coaster is safe, provided it's well-maintained. Skyline Attractions President Jeff Pike told Mental Floss, It just takes more maintenance to make sure the wood and fasteners are in proper operating condition. And all theme parks, as we've learned, are well-regulated and can totally be trusted to make those judgment calls. A water slide is kind of like a roller coaster. It has the crazy turns, dips, and terrifying acceleration, only instead of locking harnesses, you're barreling untethered through a plastic tube. Fun! You probably thought water slides were the safer, watery version of a roller coaster. But a roller coaster is pretty much the same for everyone riding it. And on a roller coaster, you're a passive participant. You just hang on to that safety bar and wait for it to end. Water slides are not so simple. For starters, people are unpredictable, and they can break rules and talk their way onto rides that they maybe shouldn't be on due to height or weight restrictions. Guys, 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 slides for kids only. Size requirement. Shut up, nerd! <laughs> Maybe that's why NJ.com found in 2014 that water slides in that state were responsible for significantly more injuries than roller coasters. So do you have the physical prowess to handle that water slide? Will you be safe going down it? 
Maybe, probably, but make sure you fit any size restrictions for the ride and try not to do anything too crazy on your way down. Remember, your main goal in amusement park rides is to stay alive. Having fun comes second. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.